In the making of this video, I would like to thank the caretakers of Mother Earth in Treaty 7 territory, the Pekani First Nation, Siksika First Nation, the Ithka Nakoda First Nations, and the Sutina First Nation. I acknowledge the ancestral territory, the Blackfoot Confederacy, and home of Métis Region Number 3. Okay, today I'm uh, near Blackie, Alberta, and uh, there's a lot of tundra swans. They're here because they like to eat the remnants of the uh, pea crops. And uh, so today, let's paint a tundra swan. Okay, welcome back to my YouTube channel, uh, Art with Raspo. Today we're going to uh, paint a uh, bird that's uh, been very important in my life, especially recently, and uh, that is the swan. And uh, if you remember um, from my other videos, all you're going to need to begin with before we start painting is just your average uh, pencil HB. And uh, I like to get these kneaded erasers and because I like sculpting, um, I like to make a little figure of my uh, creature before uh, we start painting or drawing. So here I've got a swan and uh, we can use it for erasing. I've got my cup of tea ready. So we are uh, we're ready to begin here. You will need a piece of watercolor paper too. I've got it taped uh, to my uh, desk so that it doesn't warp uh, when I take it off the, uh, the table. And uh, as you can see from the screen, my good friend Ken has uh, provided us with an excellent photo of a trumpeter swan. But I'm going to just start drawing and uh, you can follow along with me. And we're going to start off with a... Uh, a kind of a, uh, a teardrop shape, I would say, like this, very, very lightly, because we're going to go into this with uh, uh, watercolor afterwards, and we don't want these lines really to show. And then I'm going to have uh, this, uh, the head's going to come off this way, and there's this magnificent... Uh, S shape is going to occur uh, when we draw the neck. It's going to come around like this and then it comes way out past its bill even the chest of the uh, of the swan and we are going to um, put this swan on actually on water. We're going to put it on a lake like Swan Lake, the ballet, and uh, we're going to draw a line right across. We're going to kind of cut it off its body. We're not going to show its legs or anything because we are going to have a reflection of uh, kind of this side in the water. And we don't have to be too too exact or careful about that yet. Okay, we just want to make sure that this negative space in here, this space looks like the space on the photo, on Ken's photo. And I'm going to take this beak in here. Now I know that this is a trumpeter swan because if it was a tundra swan, there would be a yellow uh, patch right in here um, on its beak. So we're just going to go in here like this. And there's its uh, the swan's cheek. And then I'm just going to indicate very lightly, I'm going to indicate uh, where I think that the feathers kind of are and the shadows on the feathers. There's going to be a shadow come down here that's going to be uh, purple. Okay. And... I'm just going to erase over here and over here. And this is all going to be kind of blue in here. I can see blues and I can see purples. And okay. So you know what? We are getting real close ready to paint. 
Okay, just a couple of things that you're going to need um, to get going with your painting is, uh, of course, we're doing watercolor. So I've got a big kind of ceramic uh, container here. You can use a yogurt, uh, plastic yogurt cup or whatever. And uh, you want to have a fair bit of water on there in there to work with and uh, make sure it's uh, clean water and you keep it fresh uh, for the whole duration of your watercolor. Now the other thing is too, you can use uh, kids uh, watercolor sets. They work just fine. And uh, But for today, uh, what I, I like to use, um, I've got this ceramic plate and uh, I've used it for thousands, I think, or hundreds at least watercolors now and it works really well because I can pool the water in there. I've put uh, I'm using watercolor tubes of paint. So I've got four colors uh, today that I'm using. I've got a Hansa yellow, uh, a Payne's gray, a ultramarine uh, blue, and a uh, deoxazine uh, purple. Okay, you don't need a lot of color. And uh, just look at the... Uh, photo of the swan there you can see what colors you need um, I've got this great brush I use for just about everything and uh, it's a uh, sable brush it's a calligraphy, uh, calligraphy uh, brush it holds a lot of water you want a uh, a brush that's going to hold a lot of water for you and then um, what's great is you're going to you're going to uh, pool that water you're going to put some water on your plate here and you're going to look at the uh, photo of the swan there. And you're going to mix. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. You're going to mix your uh, your paint in here. So if I've got some purple and it's going to flow and put some uh, blue in there. And um, we can start uh, laying in some big color here with the swan and we don't need to be too exact yet and you see what I'm doing here I'm uh, gonna start And just like that, we're going to keep going. And I'm just going to let that, the magic about watercolor is that it just pools, just let it do some uh, funky, funky things there. Just let it, let it, uh, let it, what is it, frozen? Let it go, let it go. There. That's what my kids sing anyway at Christmas time. Okay, so, just like that. And uh, I'm not going to do the beak yet. I know I can see a little bit of this stuff happening. Now, uh, water is really interesting. It kind of... Uh, I'm going to kind of do these reflections. I'm going to guess kind of where they are. And I'm just going to mix up my paint like so. And uh, I'm just going to kind of squint my eyes and look at that shape. Like, it kind of goes like this. And then this other one, this blue one, is kind of like in the water. It's going to be kind of... Kind of... Uh, jiggly right because the water's jiggly but there still is going to be uh, lines whoops yeah and this is going to look really nice if i just leave it alone once i've got it pretty close just leave it alone and not uh, overwork it and just allow these uh, crazy pools to just uh, happen.
I sounded a little bit like that actor, uh, Christopher Walken there. He said, allow these pools. Just going to allow these pools to happen. Happen. Okay, here we go. All right. So you know what? Let's just let that dry for a minute. And uh, I'm going to go in with... Uh, okay, I lied that I, I said I could do it all with uh, the big brush. I'm going to go in to be on the safe side and I'm going to get myself a, a little brush here while it's drying. Okay, so I've got a little brush here. One of my students in high school gave me this for Christmas and I haven't been without it. It's just the best little brush. Okay, so I could use a Payne's Gray. Payne's gray is like that, or I could use a black for this. But I'm just going to start off with this gray. And let's see here. Uh, you can see that the beak kind of... went a little bit too far there I see but it's not I can make it work okay, the beak is kind of like that mm -hmm. Okay, that's spreading maybe where I don't want it to go, but maybe it will go, um, it will it will work. We'll see. The cheek is kind of defined this way. In this case, uh, you know, the Kleenex might be our friend here. Just gonna get some a hint of yellow in here. Oh, well, that's a little bit too much yellow, I think. But you know what there is? I see a little bit of yellow on, on the swan's eyebrow up here. Back in here with some brown. And okay, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing. Uh, I'm going to look at it like uh, it's divided down the middle here. I want the same uh, shapes, but I want them jiggly down uh, on this side because it's water. So I'm going to do a little bit more in here but I want to make sure that I don't overdo it because uh, it's easy to overdo a watercolor you want to keep it fresh everything's got to look fresh with the watercolor and I know the neck is going to come down here sort of And I'm going to use this uh, fine brush. And I know the beak, the angle is going to be kind of like this. Just like that. And I'm just going to let that sit for a minute. And then 
I'm going to go back in to uh, the body a little bit. And define this neck in here. Actually, I'm going to use a little bit finer brush for this part. Um, right in here. A little bit of brown I see in there. And a bit of brown in here. Maybe be a good idea to just run a brown line, kind of brownish line right along the water here. Yeah, I think that'll look good. Just like that. Makes it look like it's a little bit on water there. And you know what? You can always, if things get away on you a bit, you can just take a tissue paper and kind of blot it a little bit. I don't want to be, do too much more on this because it's looking okay to me. Um, I can see that the eyeball a little bit darker in here and I also see that it's got kind of a this Get into my big brush again, and I just want to see. I see a shape that goes kind of like this. So if I see it over here, I also want it to go kind of over here in the water too, like that. Yeah, that's looking good. Same thing over here. do a lot more because uh, like I say when things are going good like that you like to leave it alone you got it the big difference between a professional artist and an amateur artist is that the professional artist that's been doing it for a long time knows uh, or has a better idea of when it's going to be as good as it's going to get and they can walk away from it I've had so many students that produce just these stunning masterpieces, but they don't know when to stop. And that's, uh, that's going to be the challenge for uh, all of us as artists, is to knowing when to walk away, just like the Kenny Rogers song. Know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Know when to walk away and know when to run. There you go. Hear a little bit of my singing there. <laughs> There'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done.
Whoa, I didn't think I'd be singing that right now. But there you go. Okay. You know what? We're going to put the brakes on here. And I'm going to let this dry for a minute. And then I'm going to come back to it. And if you still like it, I'll sign it. Okay, I'm mostly okay with this. Uh, I could have taken it further, but then I might uh, go a little too far. So I'm going to err on the side of caution today. It is uh, April. And it is the 13th, 2022. And today we drew a trumpeter swan. Trumpeter swan. And I'm just going to put my signature on it. And thanks for, uh, thanks for subscribing to Art with Raspo. Thanks for being here. I got more exciting episodes for you lined up. I hope you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed today. We'll see you.